Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to another blind tasting with me, Peter, the master of hops today, blind tasting some of Sweden's most famous lagers. We're doing a blind tasting on Swedish macro lagers today, and these are all export lagers, which seems to be some of the more popular beer that's drunk in Sweden. I remember going to Sweden many times, and when you see people who are not beer geeks buying beer, they will often buy like Nolandskull or Marienstad Export on the boat, where it's a bit cheaper. So these are some of the more famous export lagers from Sweden. Some are from Carlsberg, some are from Spendrups, one is from Kopperberg, and one is from Opel Bulgari. Kopperberg is also known for their cider. Opel is as well, they make it quarterly. So these, are, these here beers are export lagers, so 5.2% stronger lagers. A Danish comparison, for example, could be Royal Export. So these slightly more malty, stronger lagers, they're not the same as the, some of the classic Dortmund export or the just different export lagers from around Germany, but that's what the beers are really are, in, are inspired by. So I thought this would be fun just to see, you know, I've done a blind tasting of Tuborg versus Carlsberg to see which one I like the most. And uh, yeah, now we're doing one with just Swedish macro lagers instead. And I didn't know just what, what are the two top brands. I don't know, let's just try and get a plethora. I mean, this could even be fun to do with some Danish lagers because there's quite a few larger scale like Pilsners or Classics we could do blind tastings on and see which one's best. So let's try this. So we've got six different beers and my girlfriend helped me uh, pour everything. So she poured it, there are stickers underneath to figure out what is what. Let's go ahead and dive in. So the beers quickly are Smolan, uh, I think it's just called Smolan, which is from Opel. Then we got Marienstadt Export, which is from Spendrups, I think. I shouldn't lift these too much because the stickers underneath. Yes, that's Spendrups. Then we got Norlandskull, which is Spendrups. Then we got Prips, which is Carlsberg. And then the Fagerhul Export, which I've actually featured in a foul beer tasting in the past, which is Kopperberg. And then we got Falcon Export, which is uh, also Carlsberg. And they're all 5.2% alcohol. Well, almost. So this is 5.2, this is 5.3, this one is 5, Norlandskull is 5.3. Marienstad is 5.3 and Smolan is 5.2. So that's usually the ABV range that these beers are in. So if we just have a quick look here on the side, colors, they look very, very much the same, but one jumps out, this one. It has better head and it's paler than the rest. Uh, this one is also paler actually, but, but this one just looks a bit different. But let's just start with the beer that's closer to my hand here. So let's check out the first one. Again, they're all golden yellow beers, fizzy yellow beers with a white head. Let's take out the aroma on this one. This really reminds me of smelling Danish export lager, uh, Royal Export. It's very minuscule. It smells like, when you smell this, you think of, yeah, it smells like beer. Like that's kind of what you think of. But you can also actually see some connotations. When I really think back, we did that blind tasting with the Oktoberfest beers uh, last year, the big six. And there's vibes towards that, like a sweeter, richer malt. It's not like a lot, but it's like slightly doughy on this one and slightly syrupy, actually. Almost like there's a bit of syrup in it, like corn syrup or maybe not corn syrup. You don't, you don't use that in, in Europe, but glucose or just something. There's like a syrupy note. No hops to speak of, really, maybe some pepper notes, but this smells exactly like what I'd expect from an export lager from a big brewery. So let's try it. Cheers. I just realized you guys might be able to see what beer this is. Wow, it's really mild, really, really mild. You could drink a lot of this without really thinking about it. This is just slammable. But it just, it kind of just tastes like generic beer flavor, <laughs> really. Like there is a little bit of a hoppiness on the back now. It has that slightly syrupy maltiness, kind of dull, kind of like whatever, not bad. Not great. Let's move on to the next one. I mean, they just look the same. CO2 levels on this might be a bit higher. There's more carbonation, a bit more of head. Let's take this one out. It smells a bit more vibrant. It doesn't smell syrupy. This actually smells like Pilsner malt. That first one has like, yeah, some almost like cough syrupy or some like a weird note. It smells a little less industrial. 
Hmm? Let's try it. Cheers. It's a totally similar aroma all the way. Yeah, that one could get a bit more cloying in the long run, but really freaking mild. There is a little bit of a chewy maltiness to it on the back, but it's like lightly crackery crisp notes. Like it's just like generic pills flavor or pills beer, macro beer. Like I think blind, you wouldn't even be able to detect that this was like a Dortmund export or export lager. It feels a bit more like, so this has a little bit more richness to it, but it's like slightly syrupy. This is lighter and easier drink to drink, um, but it's very, very like, <laughs> macro beer tasting. But what's funny with this one as well though, there's some bitterness on the back end. I got something that reminded me of corn there. But there is a little bit of bitterness. I could actually see myself kicking back a few of these for a barbecue in the summer. You're somewhere in Sweden, people offer your beer, you get this, I will drink it. Um, so let's try the next one here. Um, I mean, they look the same. There's no need to talk about the color. This actually looks a little bit more coppery. Hmm, there's something stale about this. <laughs> like, like a weird stale breadiness. I think number two is for sure the best uh, one so far. It just smells like generic beer. <laughs> that feels really empty really soulless. Um, like this one has a bit of character. Even this one, although it's a bit cloying, this feels like very devoid of soul and character. It feels like the most macro so far. It's the most generic and like lightest tasting. There is like a slight buttery touch maybe on the end. Just like lightly. This is also the most bitter number two. That one feels like extremely meh. So. Now, let's try and move on to this one here. This is not the best head of the bunch. And this is one of the ones that looks a bit more pale. So we got some malt action here compared to, so it's got a similar brightness to number two. Yeah, number two just has more of like a spicy hoppy note. This is more malty, but it's similar to number two. Yeah, uh, it, but it's really like, it's such light nuances of these. Like it's, there's not a lot of things to like an analysis and discuss. It's just like light Pilsner malt you note. And then maybe, no, it's mainly Pilsner malt. Well, let's try this one. Light and sippy, um, a bit more bright, very similar to number two. I like number two more. There's more hoppiness to it. It's more crisp. You're actually tasting some hops in number two. I, I think this one is the worst so far, but number one is, no, number two is still the one I like the most. Like this is more easygoing than this. It, and, and, and it's not cloying like that one, but it's also like a touch too generic. Like it's it's got a little bit of a bright, uplifting, crisp, crackery maltiness with Soft, 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 spicy hops. But but this one, you actually taste some hops, which I like. Let's try and move on to the one that has the best head retention. That one actually has lacing on the glass. Well, this one does too. So this has some of that cloying malt. Definitely. Uh, but actually, smelling it again, I think this might be some Munich or something. There is some robustness to this. Here, it smells more like syrup. Yeah, here it smells syrupy. Here it smells more a bit like a touch of Munich malt. Sometimes I find in classic macro beers, the Munich malt profile, if it's there, can be syrupy. I wonder if it's because they use a Munich malt extract. There's a little bit of a robust malt character to this and also some spicy hoppy notes. Quite sippy. Ooh, there's a weird note there. It's got some hop character too, some brightness, some, some liveliness, almost slightly citric. More robust malt character. Um, there was something that just reminded me a little bit of stale bread for a sec, but it's gone now. I'm thinking it's between this and number two. They're very similar. I'm still thinking it's number two. 
this just has more vibe. Like these two feel a bit more vibrant than the rest. And they actually have bitterness, which is nice. Let's see, final one here. So this actually is one of the darker ones. And also not too much head on this one. Oh man, that smells like nothing. Like that is, like I said this one was timid and smelled like nothing. Ooh, there's definitely diacetyl here. Jumping back, I'm smelling that buttery note. This smells just like fucking diluted beer. <laughs> What the hell? Let's try it. Cheers. There's a slight floral note. It almost tastes like this, but with a touch of floral. Like if you're actually able to 100% sit and distinguish these, like, oh, I know what this is, then you're fucking skilled because the flavors on these beers are so mild and minuscule. If you've ever drunk just Export lager from Denmark. If you dr the most famous Dortmund export is from uh, from Royal Unibrew, and that's everywhere, and maybe not so much on draft anymore, but in cans, and uh, that's it's quit. It's essentially, it's tasting similar to that beer. Let's just quickly jump through them again and see which one is my favorite, because I'm unsure if it's this or this that's my favorite, and figure out which one is my least favorite. Like going through these. The as soon as you have a sip of that and that, they jump out of all of them. And it could also just be because those cans are fresher. I don't know. I just picked these up at Systembolaget when I was coming home from my trip to Bonhan this summer. And I just picked them up and I ran them. Systembolaget, I didn't look at dates. So they've been sitting in my fridge ever since. So the worst Swedish export is this one. That's the worst one. Uh, loads of diacetyl, slightly cardboardy. I think it could be an oxidized can or something like that. It's off. It's not great. Um, I wouldn't pass that. I would give it like a 45 or 40 or something like that. It's pretty terrible beer. Um, it's so, the more I smell it, it's so laden with diacetyl. It just dominates the entire aroma. It's slightly cardboardy. It could definitely be an oxidized can. Like 50 is the minimum grade for a beer to pass as something you would drink. If you go to beer competitions, you enter a beer, most of these are calculated on a hundred scale and you need at least 50 to be passed. This is below that because it's got off flavors. So if we look at it as a macro export lager, this has failed because it doesn't hit the criteria as of being a clean, crisp beer. Uh, that's more robust than like say some other uh, lighter lagers. The ones that shine the most are these two. So which one is my favorite? Also, just look at the head retention compared to this one also. It's funny, the two that I like the most are the ones with the best head retention. <laughs> so I'm a hop head. I love hoppy beer. Um, I'm gonna give it to number two. It's the most hoppy of these two, and that's why it's gonna win. But this is also quite nice because it's got some more robust malt. So that's gonna be second. So second place and first place. So let's find out, what should we find out first? The worst one. Ooh, the worst one is number 19. Let's just start from one end. Oh, 16. Was it 16 or was it 19? It was, of course it was 19. You can't flip that. <laughs> 19, 10, 24, eight, one, okay. The worst was Smoland. Okay, interesting. I had a feeling this white might be my favorite of the bunch because it is from a not as large producer. Like it's not like big corporate beer as the other. And I created this one. I'm not gonna reveal the rest because I forgot to create them. Um, but yeah, this one I actually failed. I flunked Smoland. What? My favorite. Like it's, it's not amazing beer and neither of these are amazing, but in this little battle, these are the best. Uh, I would pass them because they kind of fit their styles. If we were thinking of it as a, in a macro aspect, this one, I would actually be happy to drink at a barbecue and kick back with a few of and just sit and enjoy. I would actually give this like a 70 
it's not that bad. Uh, 72 maybe and give this one a 70. I mean, I would drink these. I would not say no to these. I wouldn't like pick them up, buy them and drink them. And it's like, oh, I want a can of that. But I wouldn't say no. If I was at a social gathering or if I was out and about, these would be the two beers. If they, if I saw two of these on tap at a bar where they only had like macro beers, it would be one of these two I would get. So should we find out? Let's check out number two. That was 10. So my second favorite, my second favorite is, ha, Vaga Hulik Sport. <laughs> I hated this when I tried it uh, in the foul beer tasting. I, I gave it like two massive thumbs down or something. How times have changed. Uh, but back then it was also just fun to hate on macro beer. Like yeah, this is not a flawed beer, so why you, you, would you hate it? But okay, Fargo, the Copperberg one. I never thought in a million years that like this, the one from a company that makes cider. Like these guys also make a beer that's not that great called De Dansk Fell, Danish draft beer. Okay, and the best Swedish export lager in my mind is number 16. Which one is that? That is Falcon Export from Carlsberg. Okay, so I actually think these two are the two most famous Swedish exports and they were not even considered. That was one of them that I talked about was quite more, I, well, all of these I talked about being, this was the cloying one, that's number one. So Marienstadt Export is cloying, that would have been my second like, so my least favorite is Småland, but this would be the least favorite if it wasn't Småland. And I guess then these two were the ones that were the most run in the mill that just seemed like generic beers. Number eight. Okay, so that one was number eight. And that one, number 24. Pips. So it's not because I'm a Dane that Carlsberg won. <laughs> they apparently just make better export lager <laughs> in Sweden. So, but they, these beers are like nothing like amazing or anything. They're just like slightly whatever beers. Okay, this was not how I thought I'd turn out, it would turn out because these breweries uh, here, Norland and Marienstad from uh, Spendorps, I see so many people buy, you see them at so many places in Sweden on bars and stuff. I thought it would be one of these because they're, they're, they're really popular in Sweden, but blind, they weren't. It was fucking Falcon export lager from Carlsberg. I wonder if this was ever independently owned. It's just in Falkenberg. So it probably was at one point and then Carlsberg bought them up. But that was fun. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys Swedes enjoy it, I really hope so. I'd love to hear from you Swedes. What's the best like export lager you think? Did I feature your favorite export lager? I'm not sure if I did, but yeah, this was a long video as they always are when they're these blind tastings, but they're so fun to do. Um, it's fun to try beers like this together as well because the flavors are so damn light and mild. But then when you actually drink them um, like together, you can definitely see clear differences, although they're light and mild beers. I never graded the rest, but I think like this would probably be also pass. It's just a bit cloying. It would be in the 50s and these two would be in the 60s. So the only ones that breach like around 70 is Falcon Export and Fargo Hood Export. Yeah, something like that, maybe 68. 70s, early 70s is around the late uh, 60s. But yeah, really fun stuff, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. We've got some more blind tasting coming. So I've also got one coming of some Japanese lagers. So if you guys had either of these beers, let me know what you thought of them. Thanks a ton for watching. And remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and ring the bell for future notifications about videos. And I want to say cheers and my favorite Swedish export lager and pour some more Falcon Export. Look at that beautiful fizzy yellow beer from Sweden <laughs> in a wine glass and see you guys. Cheers in another beer review.